Hi everyone, my name is Adam. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the digital asset management functions of ACDC Photo Studio for Mac 7. We're going to illustrate the categorizing and editing functions and we'll also touch on some of the new features in the product. So let's just jump right in. You might be used to importing an image collection like you would in Lightroom as an example. I'm here to say that ACDC works differently than other applications. It's working right off of your hard drive, so there's no need to import any images into the application itself. So in short, no import times means a much faster browsing experience for you. As you open the application, you'll notice we're in manage mode, indicated by this button right here and that the left panel displays your folder hierarchy the same way it would appear in Finder. To open a folder containing images, simply navigate to one that you've created in the past. I'll open this folder here. In the software itself, you can also create new folders containing images that can be found using Finder. Again, all I'm doing is pointing this out so that you can see that we're working off of the hard drive. Each of these images has some properties that we can see. For example, we can see that this image is a JPEG by the icon here. Raw, TIFF, PNG images, etc. Those will be labeled as such as well. We can see that our image is tagged, which is a quick bimodal selection method, which I'll talk about shortly. We can also see that this image has a rating of five and a color label of blue. To assign ratings and color labels to images, simply click the desired images, use shift click to select in a row or use command to select multiple files. With your file selected, use this box in the top right here to apply the ratings and labels. When we apply ratings and labels, we see a bin icon appear in the bottom left of our thumbnail. This icon indicates that we have pending metadata. That metadata can be saved within our image by embedding it. There are two more property icons to talk about. But before we do so, let's also illustrate within Manage Mode that we can compare images using this button at the bottom of the preview panel. We can also rotate selected images by using these handy buttons at the bottom of the preview panel. We can change the view method of the preview panel or select specific criteria such as tagged or not tagged, which I mentioned earlier. We can also sort our images differently using this dropdown. Speaking of sorting our images, we can use the quick search function to look up images based on name or any assigned categories and keywords. So how do we assign categories and keywords to our image? On the right Organize panel here, you'll notice the Categories drop-down. We can click the plus button to add a new category. We can select our images that we want to assign this category, and by clicking this square checkbox here, we've assigned the category to the image. Note that a little flag uh, appears on the image thumbnail. We can search for images in our database that have an assigned category. To do this, instead of clicking the box, we simply click the category itself. Note that the center preview panel has been updated to show us new thumbnails. This is an effective way of browsing images that might be located in different folders or drives. Keywords work in an identical way. 
Let's click the plus button and add a keyword. I'll assign that keyword by clicking the box next to its name. And then I'll browse to all images with that keyword by clicking the keyword itself. Alternatively, now that our image contains categories and keywords, we can use the search bar to browse those images. Search looks for those metadata qualities in addition to the actual name of the file. Images with color labels and ratings can also be browsed. From the Organize panel, I'll click the Rating and Label dropdown. I'll browse red labeled images. As you can see, the preview panel is updated with new thumbnails. You can actually combine metadata properties to refine your browsed files. For example, let's look for all images with a red label and this category here. To do this, we'll simply click the chevrons next to those metadata qualities in their Organize panel. You can mix and match any metadata qualities that have these chevrons to update what has been browsed. Okay, so we've talked about all the icons on this image except for the development icon. The development icon simply tells us that this image has been developed in the develop mode aka we've edited the visual qualities of our images. ACDC Max 7 is not just a digital asset management tool, it's also an editing software. To develop an image, click the image, and then click develop. I won't have time in this video to talk about all the different ways you can edit your image in develop mode, so instead I'd like to focus on what new features you can look forward to. But first, a quick rundown on the mode. Our image is on the right, and all of our tools are on the left panel. The tools are broken into four different groups. Tune, Detail, Geometry, and Repair. We'll make some tune adjustments to this image. For example, I'll open up the white balance adjustment, and we'll warm our image by dragging the temperature slider to the right. I'll also darken the midtones using the light EQ adjustment. To reset an adjustment, simply click the reset button that's next to the options wheel right here. To reset the values of the entire image, including those in the detail, geometry, and repair sections, click the master reset that's up at the top of your image here. All developments made in develop mode are fully non-destructive. We'll talk more about this later. Okay, first new feature in develop mode is the develop brush. The tune develop brush allows you to selectively adjust the exposure, saturation, fill light, contrast, and clarity of your image directly where you brush. In the detail panel, it allows you to adjust the sharpness where you brush. To show your brush strokes, so you can see what will be altered when you increase or decrease a slider, click the Show Brush Strokes box. Also new to the Develop Brush is the Smart Brushing function. Smart Brushing allows you to select specific pixels based on the color of those pixels or the brightness of them. You can also select a magic combination of both values. I'm going to add a second brush by clicking this box right here. We're going to make a smart brushing selection of the sky in our image. I'll select magic from the drop down and paint where the sky is. As you can see, this is a pretty effective method of only selecting the pixels in the sky. From here, I can unclick show brush strokes and adjust the saturation, let's say. Also new to develop mode are the radial and linear gradient tools. 
You can find them next to the brush right here. I'll add one in the Detail tab and adjust the sharpness of the lower portion of my image. I can rotate my linear gradient by clicking the circle in the center here and holding shift for 45 degree angles. Lastly, I'll navigate to the Repair tab to the new Heal and Clone tools. We can use this tool to clone away parts of our image. I'll click Clone from the list here, and I'll set a point on my image that I want to clone by right-clicking. I'll find another location on my image that I want to apply my clone. And just like that, I've replaced that element. Okay, so my image has the following adjustments. A cloned element from within the repair tool. I've also got a linear gradient adjustment uh, and it's affecting the sharpness. That's within the detail tab. In tune, I've got a brush selection of the sky where I've adjusted the saturation. And in general tune settings, I've adjusted the light EQ and the white balance. I'm going to now show you how to save a preset of these development settings that you can apply to any image in manage mode. So click the cog wheel next to the top of the development settings. Click save preset. We're going to check off the elements we want to save. I want to apply these effects to an image that visually looks different than this image. So what we're not going to include is the repair clone adjustments or the develop brush saturation adjustments because they're specific to parts of our image. Instead, what we'll include is the following. I'm gonna select light EQ. I'll select white balance and detail gradient. I'll name my preset new sky. I'll save my image in develop mode. Note that upon returning to manage mode, the develop icon appears next to our image. Also note that I can revert this image back to its original values by control clicking and navigating to develop, restore to original. Okay, let's use that preset we just created. I'll shift click a group of images and navigate to the batch button at the top left of manage mode. Batch, allows us to rename, resize, and develop a group of images at the same time. I'll click Batch Develop and select New Sky from the dropdown. I'll run this batch. Note that I can also rename and resize while I batch develop. When the operation is complete, you'll notice once again that the development icon appears in our thumbnails. Those images now contain those adjustments. We can open any image in develop mode to further tweak those values. My friends, that is it for this video. Hopefully that gives you a good grasp on the digital asset management functions of Mac 7, along with some of the cool new development features. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified when we release new content. And also, what did you think of this video? What did you think about the new features? What do you want to see more of? Let me know in the comments. Take care.